وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome again to How Do I How Do I make a dua Evoke a supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We're continuing with the etiquette of a dua Evocation and supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We stopped on invoking Allah with his names and attributes And we said this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Whenever hardship befalls the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He used to invoke upon Allah with his names and attributes. For example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was said, when hardship befalls him, he would advise the believers to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, La ilaha illa Allah al azim al halim. That he call upon Allah ta'ala, Ya Allah, Ya al azim. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're the greatest, the one full of mercy. And you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, La ilaha illa Allah, Rabbu al arsh al azim. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're the Lord of the great throne. And you're the Lord of Rabbu al arsh al kareem, of the magnificent and the glory and the generous throne. So invoking upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with names and attributes is from the etiquette of dua. From the other etiquette of dua, invocation or calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that a person he calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way which even if he's in hardship, especially in hardship, Allah ta'ala said he answers the duas of those in hardship. From the etiquette is a person who faces the qibla, the direction of the Kaaba. From the etiquette of a dua is that a person should be in a state of purity, in a state of wudu. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves those who are in a state of purity. From the etiquette of a dua, one should make dua and a person is got certain in his heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer his dua. No matter what you've done, no matter what sin you've committed, you should be certain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua of everybody, everyone. And also, besides these etiquettes, there are times which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers dua. dua. And what are these times where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers dua? SubhanAllah, there are many times. But there are certain times, SubhanAllah, one of the best times to make dua. For me, it's dua while you're in prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the verse, Inni qareeb, I Allah ta'ala, I'm close to you. So call upon me, Allah ta'ala, answer your dua. But as close as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to us, the closest a person could be to Allah ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أقرب ما يكون العبد the closest a servant is to Allah وهو ساجد when he's in prostration to Allah سبحانه وتعالى another time which Allah سبحانه وتعالى says dua is the last third of the night the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to show the mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and how Allah تعالى loves to answer dua he said Allah descends to the lower heavens in the last third of the night asking is there anybody who's asking so I may answer is there anybody who wants something so I may give him is there anybody who's seeking forgiveness so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him? So the last third of the night is one of the best times for a person to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the times which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers dua is when it rains. From the time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers dua is when a person is traveling. From amongst the time which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua is when a person is fasting. So when you're fasting, one of the best, this is one of the best times and opportunities for a person to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah answers the dua. From the best times where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says dua, is when you become a father, Allah ta'ala answers the dua, the prayer of his father for his son. So from some of us who see our son has gone astray, for example, you're the best person as a father to make a dua for your son. For some of us that we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy upon us, we should ask always for our parents to pay for, pray for us and pray for our guidance and give us the best of this world and the hereafter. From the times in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answers the dua, is when a Muslim brother he makes dua for his brother. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a dua which a Muslim brother he makes for his other brother while the brother is not with him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he answers this dua. From the times in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he answers a dua, is when a person he makes this dua and is struck at that moment by hardship. At this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he answers a dua. And there's an amazing story, subhanallah. I want to end this with, inshallah ta'ala. 
is a story of one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To show at that point of hardship and calling upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with these etiquettes, Allah Ta'ala at the right time will answer this dua. This companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to deal in a trade which is known as mudaraba, which is you take people's money, they invest with you, and you deal with their, you deal with their money, their investment. So he was going on a journey. On this journey, he was attacked by a highway robber. Why this person attacked him, he said to him, the thief, I want your money. He said, take everything you want, although this money was not his, just to preserve his life. This person said, no, it's not enough for me. I want this money and I want your life. He said, subhanAllah, why do you want my money and my life? It's not enough for you that you take money. He said, no, I want to also slaughter you. So this companion, he said to him, allow me to pray four units of prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At this time, he prayed four units of prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, raka'ah. Then he raised his hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Ya Wadud, like we taught in the previous lesson, to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes. He said, Oh Allah, the most loving. And he raised his hands to the heavens and he called Allah ta'ala with his names and attributes. He said, Allah, suffice me from the evil of this highway robber. At this moment, he saw a man coming towards him and coming towards the highway robber on a horse, subhanallah. This man that came towards the horse, he had a dagger with him. And he was coming at such a fast pace, he came near the person making dua to reach the high robber and he slaughtered him. Subhanallah, immediately this dua was answered and he looked at this person. And he said, where did you come from? Who are you? You saved me from a great tragedy. Subhanallah. This person, he looked at this person that made his dua and said, Subhanallah, I'm an heaven, I'm, I'm the I'm angel from the fourth heaven. Subhanallah. When you made your first dua, it caused the heavens to shake. When you made the second dua, the people of the heavens, they began to scream. And when you made the third dua, it was said, this is the dua of a person who is in hardship. And I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to your aid. Subhanallah. So whatever hardship you're in, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always come to your aid. And whatever sins you committed, don't think I'm so sinful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not answer my dua. Because in that, this is an example for us in Yunus alayhi salam. When he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, La ilaha illa ant. Oh Allah, there is none worthy of worship but you. Inni kuntu mina dhalimeen. I'm from those who have oppressed myself. So even if you have oppressed yourself, call upon Allah ta'ala with his dua. Allah, there is nothing worthy of worship but you. Inni kuntu mina dhalimeen. I'm from those who have oppressed myself. Believe me, Allah will answer your dua. Because the person said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa this dua of Yunus alayhi salam, was it only for Yunus? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, have you not heard the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And likewise we save Yunus. And likewise we always save the believer. So long as you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if you oppress yourself, know the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same way he saved Yusuf, Yunus alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always save the believers. And inshallah ta'ala, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it answers our prayer. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it makes us of those who call upon him with a heart which is heedful and fair, so Allah ta'ala will answer our dua, and it makes our dua the strongest weapons for us, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.